happiness is beautiful It's a kind of reality Happiness is the highest good Happiness is free So let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Yeah, let's be so very happy Welcome to The Happiness Show. This is George Ortega. I'm here with Lionel Ketchian, and we're here to talk about happiness, because happiness is, always has been, and always will be the point of it all. Today we're going to be talking about happiness as a skill. And basically the idea is that, you know, being happy could either be considered a skill, you know, one skill is simply deciding to be happy and just like maintaining that decision, or it could actually be a series of skills. So we're going to basically go over the different skills. Good, great. And uh, you mentioned before when we were talking that happiness is an experience as well. And, uh, and one that we've all, you know, at some point, even if we don't remember it, have had. You know, it might be in childhood. And we were talking about that when we started the show. Right. So let's, let's consider um, experience the first skill. You know, and uh, as you say, you know, every infant within a few days of, of birth smiles. Sure. You know, they all smile. <laughs> Um, it's interesting, they, they, they smile almost 90% during sleep, and, and during the part of sleep uh -huh. known as REM sleep. Uh -huh. but, but it's just like, you know, um, happiness is, is conditioned. It's something that, that's unavoidable. There, there's not a person can get through, you know, the first few days of, of, of life, basically, you know, <laughs> provided, you know, our needs are taken care of uh -huh. um, without experiencing happiness. So that first skill is something that's a given, okay? And that, that but it's a very important skill because that sets the, the groundwork for the, for the next skills. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I think a lot of people don't remember when they've been happy. I mean, not, not, not all people, but I know I've talked to some people that just about to say, gee, I don't, I don't ever remember when I was happy. And that's rather a shame, but uh, it doesn't take long when they can get themselves back to some time when they can associate with having had some happiness in their life and feeling it. Yeah, and Lionel, that's a very important point that many of us forget how to mm -hmm. experience happiness because what happens is um, as we go through life, you know, in our society, in our world, happiness becomes less and less of a priority, less and less of something that we go. We, we're taught in school to get good grades, to make money, to succeed, you know, <laughs> to achieve, to accomplish, right? Mm -hmm. And we're like distracted by so many other goals that many of us um, lose sight of happiness even to the point of, of forgetting it, of forgetting sure. what it feels like. Sure. So, so that, um, so then, you know, this, the next skill, the next happiness skill that's very important is that we have to reawaken our valuing of happiness. Mm -hmm. We have to understand mm -hmm. that happiness is why we're here, mm -hmm. why, why we live. Mm -hmm. Well, I, and I think in order to do that, to value happiness, I, I, of course, you know, uh, Aristotle said that um, everything is a means to an end except happiness, which is the only thing that's an end in itself. But a lot of people really don't know what that means. It means that everything you're doing, uh, you're doing to d derive satisfaction of uh, and contentment and happiness from, it's almost like from the time you plant the seed and harvest the fruit, all that work was about, you know, enjoying the fruit and getting the nourishment from it. And that's what happiness is. But if we don't bring it with us, we're always toiling and never reaping. I think that's the problem. Oh yeah, so, so as you're saying, happy, um, valuing happiness to a great extent means understanding that that's why, you know, that's why yeah. we do everything. Yeah. Every, that's, it's the end product of everything. And, um, and yet, it, it really means to understand it, to understand that, um, that it's really what we most want from life. Exactly. Because that's the only way we can value something, is when we really truly understand it. Because then you know the price and the worth of something. Okay. All right. So now we've, we, we've experienced it and we value it. Now the valuing it is very important because that's going to motivate us mm -hmm. to work mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then once we value it as, as our reason for living, I think the next stage, the next skill that we, I mean, this isn't an absolutely necessary skill, but it certainly is helpful, and that is to really learn about happiness, to learn what right. works and what mm -hmm. doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's almost like if we value money, 
That's one of the reasons we go to college and learn all we can so we can make more money because we value money. And with happiness, I think it's the same thing. If we value happiness, we learn about the things we could do so that we can have um, happiness. And in, in society, we're not taught this kind of a thing because the real value to happiness hasn't been completely understood. Right. I think that's the problem. Oh yeah, so, and, and one of the things that's happening today, you'll see it more and more in the news, is that um, the science of happiness, what they've learned over the four, 40 years that they've been ex studying it comprehensively, is making its way into the media. And people mm -hmm. are learning mm -hmm. that above the poverty line, money is not going to make us happier. Mm -hmm. That being more attractive isn't going to make us happier. That being more educated won't make us happier. That mm -hmm. having more power won't make us happier. So the value of this knowledge is that without it, Many of us, you know, spend countless hours, weeks, months, years mm -hmm. seeking these things because they sincerely believe that those are the, the real roads to happiness. They become disappointed because they don't, you know, they just don't work. So, so learning can become a very, very valuable skill mm -hmm. for us to be able to use our time, our resources in the best way possible. Yeah, and learning happiness could be, as you've talked about in the past so often, just elementary, beginning, to... Um, Appreciate a smile, you know, to, to just smile. That's all. And it, it, it's, 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 it, it just boggles my mind when I think that having a smile can do so much for you and it can, it can also do a lot for someone else. I was going to work this morning and I had the tie on. And I was crossing the street and I noticed um, a person was crossing the street and I, I wasn't smiling, not, not for any good or bad reason, but I was just being me, you know. And, and the person smiled at me, and I smiled back. But they smiled because of the tie, <laughs> I think. You know, it might have been me in the tie, I don't know. But I got to share with you that that smile made my day. And why wasn't I the one who smiled? I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I think it's conditioning. It, it, I don't always walk around with a smile, but I will say one thing. A smile is elementary education and happiness, 101. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Very definitely. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so now we've got experiencing, valuing, um, we learn about it. Then the next step is something that actually, um, you know, in your case, it was an actual revelation. It yeah. came upon, upon you very, very suddenly. And that's the idea that when we really learn about happiness, when we understand it, we understand that it's very possible to become very happy and stay very happy simply by deciding to be very happy. Um, Abra Abraham Lincoln um, mentioned this several centuries ago, um, or a century and a half or so ago. He said that most folk are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. And that's really, you know, key to, 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 to happiness, to, to just knowing that happiness is that easy. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, you know, a spiritual way of looking at it is, uh, I mean, I think Deepak Chopra has talked about this, uh, Wayne Dyer, is what you think about expands. So if you think about, <laughs> if you think about happiness, that's what's going to expand for you. That's what you're going to experience. You actually begin to experience what you're putting out there. I think that's what you're talking about. Right, and, and again, like, you know, we have like about six basic emotions, um, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, surprise, and disgust. Uh -huh. And three of them are very definitely um, negative, anger, fear, and well, disgust also four of them, uh -huh. and sadness, and surprise can be either pleasant and unpleasant, and you only have, there's only one, you know, really positive, you know, of the basic emotions of the right. six. Mm -hmm. And so that it, the idea is to choose we can choose, you know, it's, it's like deciding. We can choose that emotion or over the others. We, like, our, our emotions is really how we experience the world, and we can, exp we can choose to experience the world through that emotion rather than the others. Do you think some people have a hard time choosing things? Uh, in this world, most certainly, oh yeah. Most certainly. I've noticed people in a restaurant with a menu, and the menu may not even have a lot of things on it, and they're having trouble choosing something. And they might say, what do you think? Or ask the waiter or waitress and, or ask me. And I mean, I'm not, it's not, I'm not putting anybody down, but I'm just saying I've noticed that some people have a great deal of difficulty in making a choice. And I think that if you don't know how to choose, if you haven't been trained in the art of choosing, then you're limiting your possibilities of happiness because it, it's something you must choose all the time. 
Right, because you have to remember that, you know, basically our basic choice is happiness, and then we have to decide among different um, possibilities what what we believe is going to lead to our greatest happiness. Right. And, and that, that becomes a skill. Another part of deciding, I think, is believing. Okay, because happiness is an attitude. An attitude is generally comprised of three components, um, a belief, uh, an emotion, and a behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. and what, what uh, researchers find is that when you can change one of those components, then the other two will follow. Mm -hmm. So with happiness, um, along with deciding or choosing to be happy, it's very important to believe that you're very happy. Mm -hmm. And um, I refer to this kind of technique as created dissonance. Um, in psychology, there's a term called cognitive dissonance, where um, basically you're confronted like, let's say you feel a certain way about a certain aspect of reality, like a certain car, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you've always liked a certain car. Then you find some information that um, tells you, well, this car is just not good it's not manufactured uh -huh. well or something uh -huh. so you know your your perception your your knowledge your the cognitive aspect of, of of your experience is now conflicting with your emotion this this kind of previous um feeling that you've had and that creates a dissonance uh -huh. so in in this sense basically let's say we uh, let's say we feel let's say the average is 70 percent happy happiness in, in the united states let's say we feel 70 percent happy if we tell ourselves I feel 90% happy, I feel 95% happy, we're creating that dis dissonance. Our mind is not comfortable with that, and our mind is going to seek to create a, what's known as a consonance, uh -huh. you know, a balance between what we believe and what evidence tells us is accurate according to our senses. Okay. Now, if we continue to tell ourselves that we are very happy, that belief is, is going to win out. That belief is, I mean, that, that's why, that is why you see commercials flashed on television screens thousands of times, because they know, um, however lukewarm our reaction might be to a certain product, the more they, those commercials are presented, mm -hmm. the more we're going to come to like those products. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with happiness. Well, you know, I think you've touched on something interesting, because when you talk about be uh, belief, um, uh, emotion, and then behavior, uh, that can also be said in thinking, feeling, and behaving. And if you manip manipulate any one of those three things, you can manipulate behavior. You can manipulate behavior by acting as if you're happy. You can manipulate the behavior of being happy by thinking happier things. You can do it in, in your feeling by uh, having a more powerful stance, so walking faster, you know, like a happy person would, standing more erect, doing, you know, what your mother may have told you to do, stand up straight, keep your back straight, don't slouch, um, speaking more confidently, even if you may not feel that way. All of a sudden, your brain says, hey, that's me. You know, y y first you're acting, then you're acting as if, and then you're, you're really there. So whether it's what you believe or what you think, whether it's your uh, feelings state or your, uh, uh, you know, as you put it, your, uh, your emotional state, but it affects your behavior. Now, happiness is a behavior as well. And we, for the first time, we're starting to find out we don't have to have out something outside of us Tell us what to do, what to think, or how to feel, or how to behave. We can choose it. Wonderful, great right. news. And that, that, yeah, that's the key. We can choose it. All right. So, so now I'm. All right. We have. We un We experience happiness. The first skill. We value it. The second skill. We learn about it. The third skill. We decide to become happy, and that's the key skill because that that's the skill that tells us that happiness is in our control. It's right. there for the choosing. Right. Okay. So then the next the next skill is that we have to maintain that. The next skill is focus. So mm -hmm. that means that like, as we go from day to day, um, we're going to be called upon, upon to address different circumstances, different situations, people, work tasks, you know, different mm -hmm. demands. Mm -hmm. And these demands are going to be kind of like competing for our attention, you know. Sure. You know, um, uh, pay attention to me, but you know, so, so we've got to like always, um, we've got to, while we're doing whatever it is we have to do, mm -hmm. part of our mind at least has to be focused on the fact that we should be experiencing happiness while doing it. We should always be focusing on happiness, and I mean always. I don't think there's a time when we should let it go. So again, th this next skill is really that we should be focusing on it as much as possible. Well, and, and, f and a part of focus could be, and is, in my opinion, the, you know, the decision. The decision 
is actually the focal point because without it you, you can't focus and I and I agree with you in fact I think the decision first is the only way you can be happy because otherwise if you don't focus on that you'll never focus on anything you're gonna be you, you know you're gonna be driven by the wind and the decision is the focus then the choice comes from that focus and I think and you're right. You have to focus on it right, all the, the time. Right, because the idea is, yeah, once, once you've made the decision, you've got to sustain it. You know, exactly. You've got, to, you've got to focus on that decision from moment to moment, um, you know, hour after hour, day after day, and week after week. It has to be, um, it has to be constant. It has to be maintained. Mm -hmm. And another mm -hmm. thing that, that has to happen is that, um, again, you have all these distractions. We're constantly distracted by different demands of life. So part of this focus it has to do with remembering. We've got to constantly remind ourselves that happiness is what, you know, is really the, the, the only thing that we really want in life. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. the essence of life. So these smileys, you know, sure. putting up smileys, sure. just like, you know, a happiness wrist, wrist watch, anything that, that, that we um, believe can help us become happier, help us, can help us remember to become happier, is going to help us to focus on it and then to decide, re-decide. Yeah, and George, I want to add too that in this remembering, um, point that you bring up sometimes when we become unhappy maybe through bad choices or you know sort of um, you know falling into us into a problem that could remind us of unha of happiness too because all of a sudden when you stop and think hey I'm unhappy <laughs> that's a reminder that you can now be happy again oh, yeah. and all you have to do is let go of the situation doesn't mean your problem went away but it does mean that when you focus on happiness, when you choose happiness, you're going to think about, as we've said many, many times, what your options are here, what your best choices are. You'll have better clarity of mind to now, you know, bring a solution into into the situation. Like That's what? all there is. Oh, yeah. That's a great point. Because, like, in my personal life, you know, a while back, I would see someone who was, like, upset or angry, and that would tend to kind of like make me feel uneasy or whatever, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, then I, I began to like experiment <laughs> with having that be a reminder that, that happiness very is good. very important. So now when I see someone who's upset or angry or something, it, it just, you know, it, it just quickly reminds me, hey, you know, happiness is what I should be doing. And, and it's not like something that, that one should feel guilty about because like, you know, when somebody's unhappy or angry and one sh shares that emotion with them, generally, most often, it's not to the other person's benefit. Generally, you can help another person much more with your happiness mm -hmm. than by indulging in their unhappiness or unpleasantness. Very true. Them. So again, it's, it's the idea of using other people's unpleasant emotions as a reminder that, that you know, happiness is what we really should be feeling. Excellent. And, and, you know, it's interesting that we could, we, could, we could have the reminder be a smiley face or an unhappy face. You know, when you let everything be your reminder, then you're really on the path. Then, then it's almost like nothing can stop the train except you derailing yourself. You know, in the end, we're the ones who give up our power. And I consider happiness a power. We give it away, we give it up, we give it over in the belief that someone else made us unhappy, someone else... You know, that's where that's where unhappiness prevails because we become a victim, we become helpless and hopeless, and and that's that's why unhappiness is a problem. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so again, let's go through these skills: sure. experience, valuing, learning, deciding, focusing. The next one has to do with the idea that there are really two ways that we can obtain our happiness. One is the more direct way of mm -hmm. just deciding to be happy and enabling ourselves, practicing, generating that feeling. You know, happiness is a feeling. It's just like an actor who um, has a role of being a happy person can generate that feeling. We can do that uh -huh. all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's the internal way of being happy. The external way of being happy is has to do with our experience, with our environment, and with, with others. And that's where um, what psychologists refer to as appraisal is very important. In other words, we have, and this again goes back to the idea of choice, we have a choice in how we perceive our environment, how we perceive other people, and it's the idea that we should always appraise things in a way that's going to bring us happiness. Mm -hmm. Always seeing the glass as half full rather than half empty. Always seeing what's good in things rather than like trying to just, you know, decipher the problems and just, you know, yeah. focus on what's not as mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, you know, as you're talking, I'm, I'm reminding of myself, or this is something I'm just thinking of. In fact, yesterday, it was a pretty nice day, and I, I, I just had to go around the block for something at work. And um, something interesting happened. Maybe for the first time, I became aware of it yesterday. Um, I was with someone, and we were walking along, and I passed one store, and the person inside waved, and I waved, and then I went around the corner, and another person waved, and I waved. Then it, then it dawned on me that yes, I'm a friendly person, and yes, I've waved at people, and, and you know, and they know me. But you know, it's the times when they're waving and you're waving back because you instigated that. Maybe all these times and all these years that you, that it's all, all of a sudden, it was like, it was like planting seed and reaping fruit, because all that time when you were giving happiness to others. All of a sudden, when you least expect it, people are giving it back to you because you've given it to them. Now, I find that an incredible reminder of how powerful happiness can be because I used to think that unless I gave it to someone else, it just, you know, I wasn't going to see it. And maybe that was true a while back, but now things are changing. After a while, people start to know who you are, and that's an aspect of happiness that you can't shake off this friendliness, this community. This feeling of, uh, uh, you know, this wonderful feeling that you end up having right, you know, that, for that, free. That leads to our next skill then, because um, like happiness is not just about our mind, it's also about our body, it's uh -huh. also physiological. Uh -huh. And we started the show um, talking about this, the importance of smiling, you know. Yeah. And, and um, you just explained how, you know, greeting people is very important. <laughs> so with, with this, it's the idea that... Um, Smiling and posture have both been demonstrated to increase happiness. Mm -hmm. um, I pointed this out in a previous show. Time magazine just had a, an issue where they had an article that seemed to imply that if you smile slightly, that doesn't work. That, right. That's that's incorrect. It mm -hmm. doesn't work as strongly as a broad smile, but it it, it definitely works. You know very right. well. You know it's been um, right. studied a lot. So the idea is that along with the cognitive ways to become happier. Smiling and posture, these are two mm -hmm. things that um, we can learn to do habitually and um, they not only help us to, to immediately feel happier because it, it is a biological response, actually it's a learned response for some of us, for some of us it becomes more natural, but it also helps us to, as you were saying, to spread that happiness, to share it, to, to invite others to, to experience happiness with us. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a closed loop. You know, you, first you give it out, and then all of a sudden you're in the receiving end of it, too. One, wonderful feeling. Okay. All right, so again, it's, it's um, experiencing, valuing, learning, deciding, focusing, um, appraising, smiling, and now the next, and I think perhaps the last um, mm -hmm. skill, is practicing. A good one. <laughs> yes, because like, all these things, especially deciding, but certainly focusing, appraisal, smiling, these things have to be done over and over. Again, happiness is a skill. These are skills. And like we know that um, if there's anything we want to get good at, whether it's an instrument, whether it's a sport, whether it's conversation, anything, the way to do it is practice. Yep. Yep. So, but you have to value it first. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you won't practice. Well, yeah, that's the thing. The valuing, that's why uh -huh. it's like the, um, aside from experience, that's why it's the first skill, because valuing mm -hmm. really sets the stage for motivating us. And you know, George, you know what the wonderful thing about practicing happiness is? You don't need to join a jib. You don't need to join anything. You can begin right now. You can even do it alone. You can look in the mirror and, and just smile. I mean, you're going to feel different. Oh, yeah. You're going to be practicing happiness for real. Oh, you're yeah. changing your state. And you know what else? You st when you start changing your behavior with a simple smile, you actually start changing the way you're thinking about things. You will think different, think about different things. Your feeling will elevate your behavior. You know, you reinforce that behavior. That's the point. And there's always going to be problems in the world. There's always going to be negativity. But we don't have to buy into it because it doesn't do us any good. Right. And, and the real benefit of practice is that... Um, the more, as we're experiencing and as we're um, implementing these various skills, mm -hmm. initially it's going to take concentration, it's sure. going to take attention, it's going to take effort. 
But the more we practice, the more we find that our valuing, our deciding, our smiling, all these skills are going to become habitual. So as the months and years go by, we'll find that, um, that our happiness is going to be like effortless. You know, it, it's effortless because, because we've, we've practiced it to the point that we don't have to think about the skills anymore, that they are just our natural reaction to life. You know, we, we may not realize this. It takes effort to be happy. That's true. But I, I want to tell people that it takes a lot of effort, even more effort, to be unhappy. But you don't realize that because you've got nothing to compare it to. <laughs> isn't, it isn't it a lot easier to be happy? Uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's Have you easy. been unhappy at one point in your life? It's hard work. Yeah. It's hard work. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because, I mean, it's, it's unpleasant. Anything that's unpleasant, it's, to there me, you it's going to be hard work. There you go. <laughs> Unple I didn't even think of that word. I mean, why do we do what's unpleasant and harder for us? Can anybody explain that to me? No, yeah, I don't <laughs> I'd like the answer for that one. So in, in terms of like integrating all this stuff, in terms uh -huh. of like just learning it really well, I think a very good thing that we could do is to um, try to teach others. If we're parents, it's a perfect opportunity, especially with the young kids, uh -huh. because if there's one thing in this world the young kids need to learn is how to be happy, yes. how to get happy, yeah. how to stay happy, how to become happy. Absolutely. You know what the so, best way to teach people how to be happy is? Well, I, I suppose a uh, really good way is by being very happy you, oneself. You got it. Sure. That's the best way. Nothing can speak louder than that. Right. But, but again, like you have these, our kids are like bombarded by images, by um, messages from the media, True. from TV, True. distracting them. And we've got to constantly remind them, you know, hey, happiness is what it's about. You know? We're going to change all that, right, George? Well, I think that a lot of us are changing this now. It's, it's, it's happening, you know, throughout the world. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like, we can teach our children about this. We can um, teach it at, at our churches, at, at, you know, teach our friends. Sure. And um, basically, again, it, it, the idea is that um, our greatest desire in life is happiness, and it's really what life is about, and it's really as simple and as easy as a skill. That's all it is. As, as, as this program has demonstrated, it's a series of skills. It's a skill we need to experience. Definitely. Okay, well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. In the future, we'll explore other topics designed to help us better enjoy life. Be good, feel very happy, and I hope you'll join us again next week here on The Happiness Show. Happiness is powerful. It's our underlying need. Happiness is why we live each day. Happiness is destiny. So let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy. Yeah, let's be so very happy.